Hi everyone! Welcome back to Needle Workshop. My name is Emily and I'm here today to show you how to assemble the Demon Slayer Corpse pants. We have the full Demon Slayer Corpse uniform pattern available for sale online along with a super detailed written tutorial that includes tons of extra info such as how to properly measure yourself, how to print the pattern, material suggestions, and incredibly in-depth instructions. We also have individual pieces of the uniform available for sale to suit just about any character from the show. The link to all these wonderful patterns will be available in the description box below. Even though we won't be making any video tutorials for the Demon Slayer Corpse uniforms outside of this one, you can find info on material suggestions from our previous Mitsuri release along with a video tutorial for her jacket and also one for her kimono. The fabrication process for the uniform is extremely similar to those, so feel free to check them out. As always, I suggest making a mock-up before starting. This is very important since no two bodies are exactly the same. So this will allow you to test the fit and make any necessary tweaks before potentially ruining your expensive fabric. Also keep in mind that all our seam allowances are one centimeter from the edge, unless specified otherwise. And without any further ado, let's get started. Starting with your front hand pieces, fold in your pleats at the top of your pants according to the indications on your pattern and pin in place. With your right side up, your folds should be folded towards the crotch. Additionally, take notice that the outer seam and the crotch and inner seam are both overlocked. Stay stitch your pleats in place 7mm from the edge. After your stay stitch, iron down your pleats for about 10 centimeters of length, starting from the stay stitch. Repeat the same process with all of your front pants pieces and the back pants pieces. Next, we'll need to attach our pockets to the side of the pants, so let's take a moment to prep them first. To prep the pockets, start by overlocking both the pocket bag and the pocket accents at the inner seam. Place each accent to its respective pocket bag, right side to right side, and sew them together at the inner seam using a straight stitch. Iron the seam allowance open, and we're ready to attach them to our pants. Align the pocket accent to the out seam of your pants, right side to right side, as indicated by the notches on the out seam. You'll want to do this on every pant piece. I'd actually gotten a few things wrong in my previous clip for some reason, so here's what you'll need to do. First, make sure to overlock the pocket pieces all around with the exception of the top edge. And then align your pocket to the out seam of the pants, right side to right side, but this time making sure to align it to the top edge of the pants all the way down to the notch. Pin in place and sew together with a straight stitch. Iron the pocket outwards without ironing the seam allowance open. Once you have all the pockets sewn in, we'll need to sew the front and back pant pieces to each other, right side to right side. The pocket bags should align perfectly. You'll want to sew your two leg pieces together at the out seam, making sure to go around the pocket bags, and at the inseam, making sure not to sew the crotch in the process. Iron all of the seam allowances open. At the out seam, you'll want to iron your seam allowance open all the way up to the pocket bag. For the pocket bag itself, you'll need to position it towards the front pant leg. Start by aligning the out seams of each pocket properly and pin it down. Take the pocket bags and align them to the top of the front pant leg and pin in place. Sew in place with a stay stitch 7mm from the edge. When done properly, the pocket bag seams become a visual extension of the outer seam of the pants. After assembling both the right leg and left leg, turn one of the pieces inside out and slide the other piece into it. Align both pieces together at the crotch, right side to right side. Assemble the invisible zipper at the back and sew the rest of the crotch before ironing your seam allowance open. 
For more info on how to do this, please check out our video on how to sew in an invisible zipper. It will be linked in the description box below. Turn your pants right side up. Proceed to gather the hem of your pants. For more info on this, please refer to our video on the subject matter. The video will be linked in the description box below. Next, you'll need to attach the pant cuffs to the hem. Let's start by looking at how to prep our cuff pieces. Take out your cuff pieces and make sure to align each pair together right side to right side. Overlock them together at the shortest curved side. Your seam allowance here is one centimeter, but most conventional overlocks sew at seven millimeters from the edge. You'll need to take that into consideration when sewing this section here. Now open up your piece and realign them as displayed here, right side to right side. Sew in place at the side seam with an overlock stitch. Fold the pieces back onto itself, wrong side to wrong side. Make sure to keep the unsewn edges properly aligned to each other and they're now ready to be attached to the hem of your pants. Making sure the seam of the cuff is aligned to the inseam of the pants, align your cuffs to your hem right side to right side. I find the easiest way to do this is to have your pants turned inside out and then slipping the cuffs inside. From there, you can start aligning the two pieces together, making sure that the seam allowance of the cuffs is aligned to the inseam of the pants and adjusting the gathers of the pants as you do so. There is also a notch in the cuffs that aligns with the outseam of your pants. Once you have everything aligned, sew in place with a zigzag stitch and overlock the edges together. Break the straight stitch of the gathers by pulling out your hem. Your zigzag stitch and overlock are both stretchy stitches. So for this piece to retain that stretch, we need to remove the straight stitch we use to make the gathers. You can remove the loose threads afterwards. As you are pulling, make sure not to break your zigzag stitch. If your zigzag stitch starts cracking, then there was something wrong in your setting and tensions when sewing it in. I suggest testing your stitch on a spare piece of stretch fabric before starting this section of the tutorial. With the cuffs now done, we can move forward with the waistband. Take out your waistband and belt loops. For more info on how to prep your belt loops, you can check out the Link Tunic tutorial. The link for this video will also be in the description box below. Your waistband should be fully interfaced and the side without the notches for the belt loops should be overlocked. I've also ironed in my fold to use as a reference guide later. I started by aligning all of my belt loops to the notches at the waistband, wrong side of the belt loop to right side of the waistband. But everything I did afterwards was in slight disorder. It's gonna seem like I'm jumping around a bit here, but that's just me giving you the proper order of how to go about this next section. So, once you have all your belt loops aligned and pinned to the notches, you'll need to fold the other ends of the belt loops in by one centimeter and align them to the fold of the waistband. Unpin from the other end, open up and pin down at the fold. You'll need to repeat this for each belt loop. Sew in place with two stitches, one one centimeter away from the edge of the belt loop and the other one two millimeters away. Now fold your belt loops back down and align them to the notches again. Stay stitch in place, seven millimeters from the edge. Next, fold the ends of your waistband to itself, right side to right side and on the left side, sew one centimeter from the side edge and on the right side, sew one centimeter from the side edge all the way to the overlap notch. Cut the excess fabric at the corner of the right edge. Right side to right side, align the side of your waistband without any overlock to the top edge of your pants, starting with the overlap notch at the right side all the way to the seam at the left side.
The waistband will also have notches that align with the side seam of your pants. Once everything is aligned correctly and pinned down, sew in place one centimeter from the edge. Fold your waistband over the seam allowance. You'll need to push out each corner of the waistband as you do so. As you fold your waistband in, make sure that the seam allowance is facing towards the waistband. Sew everything in place with a stitch in the ditch. Be careful not to stitch into your belt loops. If done correctly, your waistband should look like this. There is a slight fold in each extremity of the overlocked side of your waistband. Last but not least, you'll need to install a hook and eye along with a snap at the overlap of your waistband. I personally used a 10 millimeter long hook and eye and a 15 millimeter wide snap. And with that, we are done. Here's what the final product looks like. It's important to understand here that to get the full range of volume at the bottom of your pants, the stretchy cuffs need to be pulled up on the calves. So please keep that in mind when testing the fit and length with your mock-up. As you can also see, the pockets are super discreet. They blend in perfectly with the side seam. It's always practical to have pockets. You can't go slay some demons without having a few snacks around with you. All right, everyone, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this kind of content, then give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of all our upcoming tutorials. As always, I highly suggest checking us out on all our social media platform. You'll find lots of updates and info there that you won't find here on YouTube. And if you ever use any of our patterns or tutorials, let us know. We love seeing our work and we love sharing it even more. So yeah, I believe this concludes today's video. So until next time, good luck with your projects, guys. Bye-bye.